Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The bullet we're testing today is Hornady's 143 grain ELDX in 0.264 diameter, which we've got loaded up in 6.5 Creedmoor to run through our Savage Axis from 100 to 500 yards. This is our third test with the ELDX, and there will be links posted in the video's description to our prior tests with this bullet, which is of course a non-bonded controlled expansion round. We've had some interesting results with the ELDX in the past, and we're very excited to see how it's going to perform in this chambering, and we hope you are as well. So let's get started. This is our third test with Hornady's ELDX. Previously on the channel, we tested the 200 grain offering through our 300 wind mag and the 90 grain option through 6mm arc. Of course, if you haven't seen those videos, links to them can be found in the video's description and estimated impact velocities were provided today with JVM Ballistics software. As we get into the 100 here, we've got the jacket peeling back on all sides with the core folding back on the opposite side of the projectile. This is, of course, a non-bonded bullet and the difference is stark between this projectile and a bonded one. If this was bonded, we would see the lead electrochemically fused to the jacket on all sides. At 200, we still have jacket core retention, being this isn't a bonded bullet, it uses mechanical locking to keep the two parts together. And at 3, we've got real clean mushrooming, ending noticeably higher up the shank than the previous ranges. 400 is where things get a bit goofy. We had some jacket and core separation in which the core tore free of the jacket and continued on to the following water jug. We round out at the 500, just above an estimated impact velocity of 2,000 feet per second with a lead core still retained, albeit at a bit of an odd angle. And I do want to mention that this projectile may have come into contact with the sidewall of our trough as we did get some gouging in the 2x6. Okay, as we move into our graph, we've got expansion at all ranges exceeding two times original size, which is great, and our weight generally trends upward the further out and slower the ELDX gets, which we would expect. Overall expansion is 2.28 times original size, which I'm very happy with 
with, and 61.1% average weight retention is very good for a non-bonded bullet. In my opinion, generally speaking, when a projectile produces average expansion of at least two times original size with at least average weight retention of 60%, it's a solid option for hunting appropriately sized game. Another thing we've noticed with the ELDX is that the narrower diameter, the better it seems to perform. When we ran 200 grainers through the 300 wind mag, we had jacket and core separation from all five recovered projectiles. When we ran 90 grainers through the 6mm arc, we had no jacket and core separation. Here with the 6.5, we're seeing jacket and core separation at the 400 and nearly at the 500, but solid retention at the other ranges. So the hypothesis is that the ELDX will perform more consistently from a weight retention, expansion, and jacket and core retention standpoint when ran in a narrower diameter. Of course, velocity certainly plays some part in this equation, and I'm really interested to see how the 178s act when ran through the 30-06. We will also be running 145 grain ELDXs through the 270 win short mag, so we'll get a chance to expose some narrower diameter ELDXs to some solid velocity with that test. Now, I know that a good number of people don't like thin jacketed non-bonded bullets for hunting, and while I don't use them often, I think that for the right application, they can be very effective. The ELDX specifically has a lot of characteristics that I really like, such as its high BC figure and the wide range of diameters and grain weights it's offered in. Hornady also has a solid manufacturing base and supply chain that help keep the ELDX in stock, at least near me, through the troubles of the last few years. I've gradually moved to shooting the ELDX more and more as a replacement for Sierra Match Kings as my go-to target round due to the availability, inherent accuracy, and fair price of the bullet. And this point is anecdotal, but I've ran ELDXs through seven or eight different rifles at this point, and none of them have disliked the bullet so far. I've managed sub-MOA groups consistently, so long as I do my part, of course. So what is the use case for this bullet? Well, the 143 grain ELDX out of 6.5 Creedmoor will perform effectively from close to long ranges. It'll stay together well enough to perform consistently at closer distances, and thanks to its high BC, it has very good flight characteristics, meaning it's well suited to reach out to distances around six or 700 yards. In today's test, we were still moving at an estimated velocity of 2,056 feet per second at 500 yards. When we tested the ELDX through six arc at 500, we were down around 1785 feet per second and still saw effective expansion. So I think this bullet would expand effectively out to around 700 yards, provided your muzzle velocity is above 2,700 feet per second. So we've defined that this bullet's optimal use range in this weight and chambering is from anywhere in between zero to 700 yards. So what game would we want to be using this bullet on? Well, in my opinion, I'd stick to using it on medium-sized game like deer and antelope on down. I think the 6.5 Creedmoor can be a viable elk cartridge provided that the right bullet is selected, but I don't think this is the one I'd use for that application. This bullet does a very good job of expanding wide and dumping energy into its target, but it may see some separation and fail to penetrate deep enough on larger, heavier elk. But due to its terminal characteristics, I think it would do a fine job of introducing hydrostatic shock and producing a quick, clean kill on medium-sized game like deer and antelope. And to clarify, I don't think all ELDXs are inadequate for hunting elk. I'm actually of the opinion that the 200 grain ELDX in a wind mag or Weatherby mag would be fine elk medicine. Well, that's all we've got for you today, and thanks for joining us. If you got something out of today's content, consider hitting the like button or dropping a comment below, and if you want to catch more of our content, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.